Okay, so this will be the first in the series of tutorial on advanced Scala programming and today we are going to be talking about JSON encoding and decoding. Actually, this is a lesson on encoding and, and, and encoding and decoding with Scala. So the first thing you want to ask, what does it mean to encode and decode in Scala and what is sexy? So let's start with the first question. What, do we, what does it mean to encode and decode in Scala? To encode means to convert something to JSON, right? It's as simple as that. To encode means you convert something to JSON. To decode means you convert JSON back to something. What is something? Something is our data type. So for instance, in our application, we may have strings, we may have objects like users, we may have Boolean, we may have integers, floats. These are not JSON types. JSON is a completely different data type. So if you are converting something into JSON, we call it encoding, we're encoding it into JSON. But if we are converting something from JSON into our class or into a data type in Scala, we call it decoding. So without further ado, let's start with an example. So let's create a new project in Scala and start demonstrating how this works. And we also have to answer the question, why do we actually need to use encoders and decoders? Why do we not maybe use a function like stringify in JavaScript or something like that? So let's start working immediately and let's start taking these examples and it, the explanation becomes clearer. So I'm going to simply create a new Scala project. So I'm going to use, as we explained in the getting started in the basic tutorial, I'm going to use SBT and I'm going to say Scala uh, advanced, advanced, okay, Scala Advanced, that's the name of this project, and as you've learned in the previous tut uh, tutorial, on the beginner tutorials, you have to add the framework support, so if you drop down, let's give a second for you to build, okay, good. So if you go to SRC and you try to right click and say new, we don't have Scala here, so to Make it possible to create Scala files. I'm going to simply say add framework support to this project and scroll down. And I'm simply going to choose Scala from here. And I'm say, I say, okay. So at this point, if I right click, I have new, I can have a Scala class. As usual, I'm going to create a main class. So I'm going to call it main. Uh, I'm going to make it an object. As you've learned about object classes before now, object in Scala. Okay, so I'm going to simply hit the enter key and have object class. I'm going to make this class extend up so that it becomes easy for us to write our programs without having to explicitly be writing a main method. Okay, so now we have a basic program. So let's make sure it works. So I'm going to, of course, if you right click here and simply run, it's going to run, but we want to build and run using SBT, right? SBT makes things way much easier because we can have automatic restart. So it's working. So if you simply add it, it's a line just to check and just to play around, I'm going to say, welcome, welcome to, to Codec, for instance. And at this point, I have to manually uh, save everything and then run it for us to see the output. So this is not the best thing to do. We want to be able to just see the output immediately we save the file. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna add a configuration. So I'm gonna go to add this configuration here. This main is okay, but we are gonna be using SBT. So I'm going to add uh, one new one by clicking on this plus sign. I'm going to select SBT task. I'm going to call it wrong scalar. I've explained this before. And in the task, you simply have to enter run, and we need to add a tilde symbol. Tilde symbol on my keyboard, I think it's messed up. So I'm going to just look for tilde, tilde thing. All right, so these tilde symbols, I'm going to just go look for it. Um, so this is what we call the tilde symbol. So I'm going to simply copy it and use it there. So I'm going back here and so it's going to be actually tilde run just like this. Okay, so I'm going to say apply and say okay. So here we now have our run scala. So if I click on it now, we can have it running on an SBT shell. So you have this SBT shell and this is the best way to do it. Okay, so let's get back to work. So let's just make sure it works. So let's see, you can see it starts and it's still welcome to code it. Okay. 
So let me kind of put this um, side by side with this one. So let me just shift these and shift this to this place and do this. Okay, so we have the steps here. Of course, I'm going to be talking a little more than what I have in the step by step here. Okay, so let's start. So in Java, let's see what happens in Java. So if we have in Java, we want to convert a string to, if we want to convert uh, to JSON, we simply say JSON dot string five. So if we have something like, let me see if I can increase the font here, it doesn't. So if I have something like name is equal to Canton, so this we can say, oh, sorry, I have to use nodes. I'm going to say nodes. If I have something like name is equal to Kyneton, okay, so this is a data type we have, and it, of course we know that it is a string, okay? But let's say we have this as a JSON, so let's simply create it as a JSON object, um, as a JSON string, so we have, have name, Okay, so assuming we have this. Okay, so we have this JSON, and to convert it to a string, we simply say JSON dot stringify and give it name. Um, okay, I think I should use uppercase JSON. Okay, so JSON dot stringify gives us a string, right? So we have actually performed. And, uh, encoding into JSON and to get it back you simply use a pass function so this is what we do in JavaScript so I'm not going to continue here but in Scala you don't do this in Scala is a bit um, tasking because in Scala is a strongly typed language and it's also a functional language that doesn't allow side effects so if you have a JSON and simply grab this JSON and throw it to your program using a one-line code or code called pass a uh, never unexpected effect may actually uh, result. So in this case, we have to make sure that we have the right data type and converting from JSON to um, the types in our application. In this case, it could be string, it could be user defined types. So if we have this, so let's say we have, let's say we have this. So let me kind of, um, remember you can actually write Java codes inside uh, JavaScript or even Java code inside here. Yeah? So let me kind of create one new file. So this is going to be JavaScript. Java, um, you call it index. Uh, sorry, let me just call this index.js. Okay. So I'm going to say const user. Let me create this new user object here. So I have user object created in here. And you can see it has three fields. So this can be converted to JSON easily using JSON.stringify. So if I have print, uh, not print this time, so it's in the console.log and I say JSON, I'm just going to be uppercase, I think, JSON.stringify and I give it the user I have here. So I'm going back to the terminal and let's actually run this to see what we have. So this is going to be really easy. So I'm going into the uh, CD. SRC main and I'm going to say node index.js. Okay, so here you have our string provided produced for us. We can actually simply uh, grab this user and also, um, so let's say, let me let's create the string here. So user string. String is equal to JSON dot stringify user. So this is a user string, and we can actually just print it out at what we've done before. User string, and I'm going to save everything. In this case, I'm simply going going back here and doing that. So we have the user string printed, and if I want to print out the JSON version of it, I'm going to grab this user string and simply pass it to JSON. So I'm going to say JSON dot dot parse and takes the string and convert it back to JSON and if I save everything and run this code one more time 
So if I come back here and run this code, so we have our user option path. So we can convert from JSON to user and user back to JSON using JSON.stringify and JSON.pass. But we can't do this in Scala. We have to use an encoder and a decoder, all right? So basically what happens is an encoder, as I mentioned before, converts from a type, for instance, from user or from, so this user is a custom defined type. So an encoder converts from your custom de defined type or from primitive types like string or whatever, integer, boolean, to a JSON. Whereas the decoder converts from types uh, like strings, uh, boolean, or whatever, to uh, convert from the code that converts from your JSON object to to, to, um, to your data type. All right. So I explained it here. Now there's something you need to know. When you are using encoder and decoder, there is an intermediate step. So you don't go directly from the user-defined type to JSON. There is an intermediate step called JSON or called either size of the JSON. So I'm going to expand this for a second. So what we have here right now is how SASE works. So let me see, can I reduce them? Okay, so we have this user defined type. The first thing when we encode and decode, we convert, when we encode, let's start with encoding, it converts to a JSON. So there is internal JSON representation in SASE. And when we want to actually print it out of the output, we now use J uh, spaces two, or we use, just say spaces two, or spaces two simply defines how it will structure this JSON and the printout from the admin spaces can print it out as many five version in one line. So, but just know that it takes two steps. So when we write encoders and decoders, we are simply converting this object to a JSON representation in SASE. And in this case, we are talking about encoding. And we take this and convert it back to the object. The object is, in this case, it's user, but it could be string on something else. Then we are talking about decoding. So decoder for user, provides this encoder for user um, encoder for user converts to JSON and displaying this as a string is very easy so simply use one or two one of these functions all right let's get back to work so hopefully at this point you understand how the coder works so let me just read this in functional programming language like Scala the process is more involved and that is why we need Sensei Sensei uses classes to um, uses type classes Type classes or have here to describe how types in Scala should be serialized and deserialized. For instance, the user type can we can have two type classes. So these are the type classes encoder for user and decoder for user. And this is what we have to build, right? So we have to create the same encoders and decoders that we are going to use. So we can't use stringify. So at this point, I'm going to simply delete this index.js file I created because we cannot use it. This is JavaScript. So I'm going to delete it and say yes. All right, so how do we actually start building an encoder in Scala? So let's do this in the next tutorial. So in the next tutorial, we actually um, start building an encoder in Scala after adding our dependencies from Sensei. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Uh, please remember to subscribe to my channel if this has been informative for you. And I'd like to give you a thumbs up for learning advanced Scala programming I remain kind on the Tech Pro. If you have challenges or comments, please leave it in the comment box below and we'll see you in part two.